we out here. 28 minute day. 28. It's hot. It's hot and sunny. <laughs> it's like 70 degrees and sunny. It's gonna snow tomorrow, which <laughs> absolutely, su absolutely sucks. Yeah, very Colorado. I apologize for my nakedness, but it's hot. We're in the last stretch here. Hammy's burning. Yeah. Lungs burning. Yeah, but definitely the furthest we've gone. Yeah. There's some cops around this corner here. I said to Sarah, they're gonna pull us over for looking too good. <laughs> okay, update. The cop moved his parked car around the corner, turned, followed us, slowed down next to us, rolled down his window, and I heard him slowing down, and I was like, what is he gonna say to us? What are we, we're not doing anything wrong. And he goes, way too much energy. And then he gave like a cackle and gave us a thumbs up and drove away. I thought he was gonna say way too much skin. Hello friends, welcome back to another quarantine what I eat in a day vlog. So we're having our first meal of the day. We're starting to eat like really late. Um, it's already 1 p.m. And all I've had today is a piece of chocolate right before my run to sustain me. Um, all I had was a can of Red Bull. <laughs> it's getting a little ratchet in here. Anyway, you explain what you're eating first because it is easier. I have leftover quinoa, southwestern quinoa salad from the Vivo Life live stream. Yeah, we did a live stream on their Instagram and their Facebook page. Thanks to anyone who uh, tuned in, it was fun. What else? And a corn spicy chicken patty. That smells really good. I told him bet? when he was microwaving it, it smells like a, like a mall food court. God! These are really good. Thank you. Mmm. Okay. So here's my first meal. I've got, I think this is an ambrosia apple, I could be wrong. Slice that up. This is a packet of low sugar maple uh, brown sugar oatmeal. This kind. I've been obsessed with this. I've been eating oatmeal like every day, which is very uncharacteristic of me. The weird thing is though, see I only like the maple and brown sugar flavor and uh, you can't buy that one alone at a low sugar. It's a real bummer. I showed this in a previous vlog, but I like to cook my oatmeal with very little water so that it becomes like a cake and then I drizzle cold milk over it. We're actually out of plant milk. We've been going through it like crazy since we've been uh, following that Dalgona coffee trend every morning. So um, this is what we have here. This is actually the silk half and half, which I like a lot. I just transferred it to the mason jar because the cap kept getting kind of crusty. It was grossing me out. So I, I put a little bit of the half and half in here with water to dilute it and shook it up, and um, that's what we're using for milk. I should probably try to make like oat milk or almond milk. Maybe that'll be in a future vlog. You break it up like this. I really like it. <laughs> and then I have some BCAAs here. I showed these in a previous video. It's the gummy or sour gummy flavor by Lonnie Noom. Also, right here, I'm making a second round of the New York Times No Need Bread. So it's been sitting under here. I'm gonna pop it in the oven pretty soon. So the recipe says that you can ferment it anywhere between 12 and 18 hours. Last time I did the bare minimum, I just did 12 because I was impatient to bake it. This time I did 12 at room temperature and then I threw it in the fridge and let it do a slow cold fermentation overnight and then I have been uh, thawing it out on the counter and we're gonna see if the extra fermentation time makes it taste better. Hopefully it does. I can't wait to eat it. It's really good, Truthfully. you guys. Definitely try it if you if you can find flour. That's what he looks like. Very cute. How's your um, hmm? half and half oatmeal? I haven't tried it yet. Oh. Uh, next time we go shopping, we need to buy like a thousand pack of almond milk. We bought three, we bought a gallon and a half. It's fine. It's serviceable. I placed a big order with Thrive Market and I ordered a bunch of uh, like the shelf stable oat milk, but it, it didn't come in my order. I think they had to, they, I think they're, they ran out. They backed up. Had to cancel it. So for this bread recipe, you actually have to preheat the oven with your Dutch oven in it for like half an hour. Since I mentioned my Thrive Market box, I want to show you what I got. This is not sponsored. I pay for my own membership and I paid for this. Stealing Eric's desk for a second so I can have that dope lighting. Initially went on Thrive Market to hopefully place an order with lots of staples in it, you know, pantry essentials. 
I wanted some dried beans, some canned tomatoes, some pasta, like shelf-stable plant milk. A lot of that was out. So um, I got some staples, but honestly, I ended up getting just a lot of snacks. I needed more nutritional yeast. I was running out. I use this in so many recipes. I think the price is pretty good on Thrive Market, too. Pretty much all of their regular wheat pasta was out, but I really like the Tinkyata pasta, so I got some of their brown rice spaghetti. Then this is actually my favorite gluten-free pasta I've shown in a couple of videos. It's by Jovial. This is brown rice penne. Pasta is just always good to have in your pantry. We've been eating a lot of pasta, actually. Got a refill of maple syrup. I cook with this a lot. I bake with it a lot, especially. Got some dried black beans since we've been making instant pot beans a lot lately. I got some of these seaweed snacks. They're like salty and crispy. Got some cans of diced tomatoes. I've had trouble finding these in stores. I've got a couple cans in here of just regular coconut milk. Again, I use a can of coconut milk like once a week at least. You can use this in chia pudding. You can use it in baking. I like making mango sticky rice. I make a lot of Thai coconut curries. I ordered these lesser evil paleo puffs. This is a no cheese cheese flavor. These are made out of cassava flour. They just look like these, like the puffy Cheetos. Mm. What are the other ones? Oh. Um, Delicious. Thrive Market, I guess, makes a lot of their own like name brand snacks. Grain-free puffs in the vegan nacho flavor. Same concept, but I think the flavoring on this is better. This tastes kind of like Doritos to me. These are really good. If you can get your hands on these, I recommend it. Got some smoky barbecue plantain chips. And then lastly, I got some of these Unreal dark chocolate peanut butter cups. And they're crispy. They've got like crispy rice, oh, crispy quinoa. They're so good. This is what I had before my run. They're, like, they're kind of small, so they're not as big as like a Reese's cup. That's everything I got. I've had it sitting on the floor because I wanted to show the vlog and now I can finally put it away. Okay, so the oven and the Dutch oven should be preheated by now. I'm gonna take it out. This is optional, but I like to put a little bit of cornstarch, it's not cornstarch, cornmeal on the bottom. It just gives it a little bit of lift off the bottom of the Dutch oven so that it can cook and crisp up there instead of sticking. Taking our dough and just plopping it in here, we are covering it and for the first almost half of the baking, it's gonna be covered. And this is just gonna generate steam and that improves the texture of the crust. All right, we're rolling. Oh. She oh. beautiful. Did you hear that sound? Wow. The crust. So it comes out like super crusty. I, like the first time I made this, I was a little concerned that I had like overcooked it or something, but it softens up as it sits. And then the next day, in my opinion, it's even better. It becomes like a fluffy, kind of like Italian loaf. So we're gonna let this cool. Do you let it cool in there or do you take it out to let it cool? I'm gonna take it out. Last time we also didn't let it cool. I like cut into it like five minutes right away. after I took it out <laughs> and it was not, it wasn't right. Definitely wait for it to cool. It's worth it. We got bread, people. Look at it. That crumb dough. Crumb dough. All right. We got country crock butter, softened. Okay, what piece do you want? You want the crusty piece? Kinda. Mmm. <laughs> the texture's so good. It's a little tangy. Okay, so we are about to make another batch of jerky. We're going to carefully measure everything and write it down and post it on the blog because I know you guys have been wanting a recipe. So we're gonna perfect it today. We got dry stuff and wet stuff. We'll start with the wet stuff. Olive oil, soy sauce, liquid smoke, Worcestershire sauce. All right, salty, greasy, smoky. Dry stuff, black pepper, onion powder, paprika, wait, cayenne, paprika, they look exactly the same, and garlic powder. Um, and I think that's basically it. Uh, there's no s extra salt because the Worcestershire and the soy sauce are both salty. And so this is, these are the spices for like the main standard flavor. Right. The standard jerky flavor. We're not no barbecue, no smoky chipotle. This is standard. If you missed our last episode where we 
made jerky the first time. These are soy curls. We hydrated them in boiling water. We drained and rinsed them with cold water just to cool them off and then wrapped it in a nut milk bag. You can use a clean tea towel and you wring as much liquid as possible out of these. The less liquid you get out of it, the longer you have to cook it. Right. So you want them hydrated, but you want them to be kind of like spongy so that they soak up your marinade. Okay guys, we're gonna try this again because yesterday devolved into madness and I stopped filming. So what we did, we ended up making actually two batches of the jerky just to perfect it the second time around. Photographed it, we got it up on the blog. Eric wrote his first guest post on there. So I'll have it linked down below if you wanna make it. We would love that. Okay, it's the following morning. We actually first thing went in to the grocery store and got a couple of essentials. I finally found flour. I haven't been able to find it for weeks. And uh, we got some more almond milk and then a bunch of other stuff, which just boring stuff. I'm making, I made first off my brick of oatmeal that I made yesterday, because I'm obsessed with it. I made our Dalgona whip. This is gonna be our breakfast. I think since I've restocked my flour supply, I'm going to make like a loaf of sandwich bread today because we already ate like half of the no need bread that we made yesterday. So since we ended up working on the blog post for so long, we uh, realized super late that we didn't have any dinner plans and we ended up going to Taco Bell. <laughs> it was the first time we've been there throughout the entire quarantine. Pretty proud of ourselves, but um, the point is, I'm gonna try to eat more vegetables today. So I'm not gonna eat lunch now, but I did prep what I will be having just so that I could photograph it and work on it and put on the blog. I'm gonna be making like a vegan chicken salad. I'm using more soy curls. We couldn't find tofu again today. It's all sold out. I will try my best to have the recipe already up on the blog and link down below by the time you see this, but I soaked these soy curls in boiling water and I added a chicken bouillon, one of these bouillon cubes that I use all the time. Then I squeezed it out. I make this pretty much the exact same way as I make my chickpea salad. Finely diced celery, finely diced onion, mustard. I love putting dill relish in my mayo-based salads. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of onion powder, a little bit of garlic powder just to make it more savory. And then this is the only kind of vegan mayo or mayo-like substance that I could find at the store. It's Vegan Dressing and Spread by Best Foods. I think Best Foods also makes a vegan mayo, so I'm not entirely sure what the difference is here. I taste it, it tastes the same, but I'm gonna be using this, a couple tablespoons of this. If you wanna lighten it up, you can always use some unsweetened plain vegan yogurt if you have that on hand, or a lot of people have recommended just using some hummus. Obviously that's gonna alter the flavor, but it will still give it that creamy texture. I am a fan of adding diced apple to my chicken salad, but I only have one apple left and I want to eat it as an apple. Sliced grapes or like dried cranberries or golden raisins are sometimes good in this as well, if you're a fan of the you know, sweet and savory thing. And if you want to mix it up, sometimes I like adding a little bit of curry powder to this, but we're gonna keep it classic today. Pretty generous amount of pepper. I don't actually think this needs any salt for me personally, just because the chicken broth that I soaked it in is quite salty. And this particular mayo or dressing and spread is also pretty salty. So just taste it and salt preference. Here's our soy curl chicken salad. I'm not gonna eat it now. I'm gonna stick it in the fridge and have it on hopefully some homemade sandwich bread in a little bit. In the meantime, I'm gonna go try and get this recipe up on the blog. Also, I think that we mentioned this was gonna happen yesterday, but it snowed. It's not too bad, so I think that we're gonna go on like a walk or two later today just to get our 10,000 steps in. I'm doing this because I have a step counter on my watch. Before I start working, I wanted to really quickly show you one of my 
latest acquisitions. I am uh, attempting to balance you on the Thrive Market box, which I have yet to put away. Don't judge me. Look at this. <sighs> Gently used ice cream maker. <sighs> I have been thinking about getting an ice cream maker for a couple of years. It's right up there with the deep fryer. We'll see if I end this quarantine still not owning a deep fryer, if you want to take bets on that. We have been going through an ice cream phase lately. I've been getting salty about how expensive vegan ice cream is. So I thought, let's at least try to make our own, right? A lot of you guys DM'd me and said that it's actually not a trivial matter, that it's kind of difficult to get the appropriate texture when you're not using dairy, but that's fine. I've got all the time in the world. I was actually gonna get the, Cuisinart has a smaller model, which is the one that I've had like on my wish list for all these years. But then when I went to um, buy that, I was browsing and this used one cost less than the smaller model, so. I'm like smelling it. I, I really do think this has only been, maybe it's never been used, I don't know. Seems to have all the original packaging. Ooh, there's water in here. I have made ice cream before, before I went vegan, but I had one of those old fashioned ice cream turners where you have to put in a ton of like ice and rock salt. So I guess this fancy machine eliminates the need for all of that. Yeah, well, I'll update you on my ice cream making odyssey. If you guys have had any successes making your own vegan ice cream, let me know. Are there any non-dairy recipes in here? Can you throw me a freaking bone? Helado de yogur de frutas del bosque. That is a word I have yet to learn. I don't know what those are, but literally it means fruits of the forest. That's a Spanish term for berries. Why is that so much cooler and more romantic than the word berries? I've been thinking of starting to learn a new language on uh, Duolingo. We were watching that K-drama that I mentioned a couple videos back because this is my first life. It was so good. So it got me thinking, like, should I start learning Korean? I've also always wanted to learn Japanese. I actually know a lot of songs in Japanese because I went through this like gamer anime obsession phase when I was younger and I learned a lot of Japanese music. But then I've also studied Spanish and Latin and so I figured that learning another romance language would be easier. Like should I just learn French or Italian? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Anyway, we got off on a tangent. I'll see you later. I had to show you Eric's breakfast because it's another recipe that I haven't shown on this channel, but it should be up on the blog because I made it for the Vivo Life YouTube channel. I got the perfect amount. Yeah? So what I do like a psychopath, put one chocolate nug in, oh, it doesn't fit. In each crevice? Yeah, but I just dumped a few in my hands and I, <laughs> or my hand and I actually pulled out the perfect amount. Look at that. Beautiful. Into so the these microwave. Are, um, vegan protein waffles. Hey guys, I'm checking in. What I'm learning is that it's uh, surprisingly hard to develop recipes and also vlog at the same time. But I just made a loaf of like garlicky herb sandwich bread. I'm working on editing those photos and getting those onto the blog as well. And um, in a little bit, we are going to go on a little jog. Oh, <laughs> we, were <laughs> we were initially just going to go on a walk, but it is snowing now. And we really want to get our 10,000 step goal. We're like four weeks into our streak. So we can't just, we can't just give up. So we're going to jog so that we can do it faster and be outside less time. Ooh. I'm having... <laughs> 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 Eric's throwing a tantrum. <laughs> I'm eating an Oreo, Chibani oat milk that I just bought today. We're, we're being really productive today, right babe? <laughs> You're so grumpy. Yes, we're being productive. I made a theme song for someone. <laughs> and played some video games, right? And I, uh, I got the podcast ready to upload for tomorrow. Oh yeah. Our bread dough is risen, so I'm going to shape it into a loaf now and I'm going to let it rise again. Then we're going to bake it, then we're going to have some food. Just got back from a quick run. I'm actually starving. 
but I'm still waiting for my garlic herb loaf to finish baking so that I can have some of the soy curl chicken salad on it. And while I wait, I'm having a really sad little <laughs> piece of bread with peanut butter and jelly. Just finished the last of this jar of peanut butter. Every time I do, I make overnight oats in the jar just to get the last of the peanut butter out. If you haven't tried that, I recommend it. Eric is in charge of dinner. Hello. I'm making a variation of my stepmother's butternut squash soup that she made a lot when I was a kid. It's real good. So in here, I have cubed butternut squash that was frozen. That was gifted to us by my mom. <laughs> uh, most of an onion, roughly chopped. We had some leftover bell peppers. I haven't seen a recipe that has this, but I figured it'll, it'll taste good. Mm. Um, and like two kind of small carrots chopped up roughly. Uh, just a little bit of olive oil. And I'm just kind of sauteing it so these defrost and so they get some color and flavor. Um, and then I'm going to put in two cups of this not chicken stock. And, well, now's a good time as ever. Um, and I'm gonna let that kind of boil and every, get it, let everything get soft. And I'll season it a little, and then I'm gonna put in some of these cooked white beans that we made in the Instant Pot. We're making them super, super soft, and just gonna puree them in. With the immersion blender. Yeah. Which I don't know how to use yet. You just stick it in. Nice. Stick it in and go. Nice. So the recipe usually has heavy cream in it, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, so instead of using like the silk half and half or something, we're going to use the beans for a more nutritious, creamy, thickener, you mm -hmm. know. And some protein. And some protein. All right. Is that it? Nutmeg? Yeah. So I'll spice with salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder probably, um, and a little bit of nutmeg to give it that fall taste. And we're going to have it with some toasted garlic rosemary loaf. Mm. It's going to be great. Oh yeah. Here's dinner. We got some salad with some rosemary vinaigrette, our bread we toasted, and the soup that I make look I made look fancy. I put some of the uh, silk half and half, a little drizzle of olive oil, some red pepper flakes, some parsley, all totally unnecessary, strictly for aesthetic purposes. Can I say how proud I am of this? I'm so happy with how it turned out. Of course you are. You I haven't tried it yet. Can I take a bite of the bread? Yeah. Is it good? It's so good. I've been waiting all day to eat it. Eric's the one who requested this flavor combo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's gonna be so good dipped in that. Yeah. All right. I'm weirdly filming Sarah because I want her to try try the soup on camera. <laughs> well, I'm gonna try it without all this crap that I put on it. Mm. What other spices did you put in here? Nutmeg. Mm -hmm. Onion, garlic powder. Mm -hmm. Cinnamon. Cinnamon, Cayenne, sage, sage, umami. Oh, the Trader Joe's umami. Mm -hmm. Which is like a bunch of mushrooms. Are you into it? Mm -hmm. Do you love me more now a little bit? A little bit. It reminds bit, right? me of something so specific that I can't put my finger on. Yeah. What I like is that you make stuff that I just would never make. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I would never put these flavors together, but it's really good. Yay. I'm glad. Okay. I'm dip bread in it. Yeah, do that. It's really good. Oh. Tell them what we're watching. Oh, we're gonna start a series on Netflix called Crash Landing on You, which is uh, another Korean drama. Hey, so I'm here to film a little outro for this video. I'm actually filming this couple weeks after the actual vlog was filmed. I'm sorry it took me so long to get this up. I've just been so obsessed with working on my blog and testing recipes lately, so that's kind of what I've been doing, but I'm gonna try my best to get back onto my regular upload schedule. Um, so the last thing I had on this day was a little cup of just regular, I had vanilla soy milk ice cream, I think it's by So Delicious. Uh, it's pretty good, it's not the best texture, it's a little bit icy, but if you like soy based ice creams, I think the flavor is pretty good. And I had a craving for Magic Shell, which if you're not familiar with that, it's like a chocolate sauce that when it touch, touches cold ice cream, it gets really crunchy and I really love cold crunchy chocolate, it's like my favorite thing. So I did a Google search, I found out you could make something pretty similar if you just combine melted vegan chocolate chips and coconut oil. So I did that, I also ended up chopping up some roasted salted peanuts and uh, just combining that all in a cup. So essentially I made my own like uh, vegan drumstick without the 
cone and I love drumsticks. So love that combination. That's the last thing I ate. Thanks so much for sitting through this longer video. I'm going to try to um, upload more frequently and maybe make them a little bit shorter. I did just redesign my website, sarahsvegankitchen.com. So if you want to check out any vegan recipes, if you need some cooking inspiration for the rest of quarantine, you can check that out. I'll have a link down below and I'll see you soon. Bye.